Hello, and welcome to Simple Man Sermons, the preachings of a simple man called by God to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Psalm number 30. A psalm, a song at the dedication of the house of David. I will exalt you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cry out to you, and you healed me. O Lord, you brought my soul up from the grave. You kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. For his anger is, a, is but for a moment, his favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Now, in my prosperity, I said, I will never be moved. Lord, by your favor, you have made my mountain stand strong. You hid my face, and I was troubled. I cried out to you, O Lord. And to the Lord I made supplication. Where profit is there? In my blood when I go down to the pit. Will the dust praise you? Will I declare your truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me. Lord, be my helper. For you have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. To the end of my glory, may sing praise to you. And not be silent. O oh my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Psalms 30. And this is a reading from Proverbs 30. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you, and you be found a liar. Two things I request of you. Deprive me not before I die. Remove falsehood and lies from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food allotted to me. Lest I be full and deny you. And say, who is the Lord? Or, lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. Now, there's so much life wisdom right there in those few sentences. Two things I request of you. Deprive me not before I die. Remove falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food allotted to me. Lest I be full and deny you. And say who is the Lord. Or least I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. Such a counter to the culture today. Where the, they say the point of life is to be Instagram famous or famous and rich and wealthy and have all this stuff. But here's a man praying, don't give me too much, lest I forget about you. A fear if, I've, if I'm honest that I've had lately. Now this is not the podcast about me. This podcast, just like the Bible, is not written about you or me. It's about God. And this podcast is about God. And I don't often talk about myself or my life in this podcast, but I will if I think it helps others. And I think if it illustrates God's work in my life, then I will. I have recently been persecuted out of a job. Um, I lost my job, not for doing the wrong thing, but for doing the right thing. And I often screw up and make mistakes. I'm not perfect. Um, but this was not that case. It was... They were literally asking me to persecute somebody else who who didn't deserve it and to get them fired for doing something that wasn't right and picking on somebody unfairly and unjustly. And I refused to do so. And I quickly thereafter lost my job. And I have no regrets about that. My job does not supply all my needs. My God supplies all my needs. Jobs come and go. God is forever. He is the point of my life. He is my stay. He is my rock. I build my life on God, 
He is my firm foundation and nothing else. And as it is written, as we are told, in this life you will have troubles. If you are walking the Christian life, if you are following Jesus, you will be persecuted like he was persecuted. The Bible is pretty clear about that. And I don't wish to be persecuted, but I know as a Christian, if you do the right thing, you often you will be despised for it. I've, I've seen that enough in my life. This isn't the first time that I know that. But anyway, I trusted that God would provide for me. I didn't know how. I didn't know exactly when. But I took some time off. I've been working since I was, oh, I don't know, I don't know, 14 or so. And I'm working full time. I joined the Marine Corps at 17. So I figured God's provided me with enough. I took some few weeks off and went out into desert places and not, it didn't suck. It was actually pretty awesome. I got to hunt and fish and forage and in the desert places, God was there and I was happy. I prayed for a new career, a new job, and a more abundant life. And God, just like it is written, the words of the Bible are true. God is rich in mercy. Also, as it is written, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Amen. You'll find that in Ephesians 3. More than I could ask or think, and that's true. He gave me a great new job. He gave me a place to stay with free rent, free utilities, free electricity, free water. Except before this, I, I went out in the wilderness. I was literally living off grid, you know, without on demand electricity or running water. And I was fine. I was happy with that. In fact, I rather enjoyed it. But he gave me. I prayed for a, you know, a career, a job to replace the one that I lost. And this one is far better, far better schedule, um, far better. Like I said, free rent. I get to live not in a city, not in a people hive, as I call it. I get to do work that I enjoy and that I like that's relevant to blessings and talents that God's blessed me with, as is written. To you who has more shall be given and he will have an abundance. That's written to the man who, who we give talents. If you use the talents you've been given, he gives you more. If you don't use them, he takes them away. You'll find that parable spoken of by Jesus. And he's given me a couple of talents in life that I've used throughout my adult life. And he blessed me in this one that I get to do something that I enjoy and make money at it. And I am the manager. I manage this organization. It's not affiliated with this podcast. So I'm not going to mention what it is, but I, I also, as is written in Deuteronomy 28, he makes me the head, not the tail. I should be above only and not be beneath. And God does all that. And he's been very good to me. And like any starting a new job, especially starting a new management position, as you can imagine, it's been pretty time consuming. And I find myself thinking about this Psalm 30. God's given me so much. Let us not forget also it is written, it is God who gives power to get wealth. Don't ever think it's you or your smarts or your brains or your talent or your anything. Everything, every good thing comes from God. If you have talent, if you have self-discipline, if you have resources, everything was given to you by God. You didn't create yourself. You didn't give yourself birth. You have because God gave you. You only exist because God made you. And you only can love because God first loved you. Remember that and fear your God. And don't think that ever anything good was because of you. Anything good always comes from God. But I've been praying recently that in the new job, in my busyness, in my wonderful marriage, in my wonderful new puppy that I have, in my wonderful place that I'm staying, that I get not distracted and forget about God. Because the point of life is not like the culture tells you. It's not to have more stuff. It's not to have more money. It's not to have more fame. It's not to have you know, more reverence by people. The point of life is to have a relationship with God. To know God and be known by God. And to walk in relationship with Him and to grow closer to Him every day. And I've been praying recently, and I really mean it. I don't want so much that I forget about God. And here is Psalms, or Proverbs 30, rather. As we read in Psalms 30, he delivered me. He rectified. He gave more than was taken away, just like the story of Job. We all know about Job and, you know, how 
horrible things happen to him. But if you read the end of Job, God blessed him twice as much in his latter days than in the first. He went through trials, but he got more in the end than was taken away. God is rich in mercy. And just like we read in Psalm 30, I'm recounting my life to you because he did the same for me. He is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. I trust in God. I don't always know how. I don't always know why. And if I'm being honest, he often takes longer than I would like or expect. But God has never let me down. Other than fasting, I have never gone hungry. I have never starved to death. He has never left me wanton or destitute. He always gives me more. More than I can ask or even think. He, when I was younger, I prayed for this woman to work out or that woman to work out. And I have a wife now that is far better than anything I ever thought or asked for. Far better than I could even imagine. Because God is rich in mercy. It may have taken longer than I wanted, but it was so worth it in the end. And when he gives you all these things, don't grow weary in doing good, as the Bible says. In Galatians 6, it says that. And let us not grow weary in doing good. As Paul likens it, the Christian walk, to a race. It's a race. And if you've ever run a race or a marathon or gone a really long distance, you know that in the middle it can kind of suck until you get that second wind. There are times when you can grow weary and forget about the finish line, which is heaven, which is Jesus, which is being in the presence of God. Let's recount the parable of the sower and the seeds on the different ground. The words of Jesus and the gospel of Matthew. Behold, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. And some fell on stony places, where they did not have much earth, and immediately sprang up, because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered and said to them, Because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For whoever has to him more will be given and he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Now Jesus continues on. I encourage you to read the whole running of the passage for yourself. But he talks about what was written by the prophet Isaiah. And then he goes on to explain this parable we just read. For assuredly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see and did not see it and hear what you hear and did not hear it. Therefore hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who receives the seed by the wayside, who received the seed by the wayside. But he who received the seed on stony places is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises, because of the world, immediately he stumbles. Now, he who receives seed among thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives the seed on good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. O oh, Heavenly Father, how I pray that I be planted on good ground. I pray that for all of you as well. Just like Proverb 30, I don't want so much that I forget about God. I don't want to trade God for any amount of stuff, for any amount of crap, dung, 
in this world that's passing away, that's perishing. Everything that you think and see and touch and smell in this world one day will not be as it is. The tallest mountain on this earth one day will erode into the sea. Only one thing is eternal and unchanging, and that is God, and I want that. I don't want anything in this world to get away from that. Jesus says it's easier for a rich it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And then he also says right after that when his disciples are astonished that what is impossible with men is possible with God. I am very thankful, hopefully, for the things that God gives me in my life. But I don't want anything to get in the way of God. I know I get distracted. I'm not perfect like any other man. But I don't ever want to trade my God for the things of this world. That's a poor trade. That's a lopsided trade. If you'd rather have anything in this world besides God or more than God, then I'd say to be circumspect to consider that. If you're choosing other things over God and don't want to be with God now, then why would you want to be with him in eternity? I want God. I'm thankful for the good things that he's given. It's a blessing from God. I'm thankful for so many good things in my life that God's given. But I pray that I don't get so distracted that I forget about what's really important. My God, my Lord, my Savior. That I don't ever think that what I have is because I deserve it or because I earned it or by some merit in myself. But that I remember with every breath that God is the giver of all good things. That I have, rather that I am, because God made me. That I have only because God gave me. And I love only because God first loved me. And I hope that I don't ever get so much that I forget about that. And I pray just like in Psalm 30 that I never get so destitute that I profane the name of my God. What is written in the Lord's Prayer? Give me this day my daily bread. And what is written of the parable of the rich fool who thinks that he has done all this by his own work and his own righteousness and that he will make himself safe? And what is written in that parable? He says, you fool. This very night your life will be required of you. I don't want so much stored up that I think I don't need God. Because that's always a lie. I always need God. Every breath is by God's leave and by God's grace. You see, I'm a military man. If you don't know my bio, served in two branches of the armed forces. Um, one of the branches, there's a saying, especially on ships, by your leave. Which means kind of by your permission, may I. By your leave. It's only by God's leave that I take another breath. It's only by God's leave, by God's permission. That my heart beats one more time. And I don't ever want to forget that. I don't ever want anything. Any shiny thing. I don't want anything to get in the way of that. And I don't want it to get in the way of it for you either. I want and I pray to be planted on good soil. To bear fruit. I pray that I bear fruit and bear more fruit. Jesus said he came that we may have life and have it more abundant. And I pray for that abundant life, and I want that abundant life. And he also says, the abundance of a man's life does not consist in the things in which he possesses. I pray for myself and for you to be planted on good ground. I pray that God may use me, that you may see the glory of God personified in his son, Jesus Christ. That you may see, just as it is written, that we are one, that Christ is in God and God is in Christ and they shine forth in us, in me and in you, that we may be one. I pray for myself and for you that we be planted on good soil and bear fruit for God and not forget about the hand that shaped us. Heavenly Father, my Lord and my God, I pray in Jesus' name that you give us this day our daily bread and not give us so much that we forget about you and turn our back on you. I pray that we remember the hands that shaped us and not let anything in this world 
forget about what's most important. In Jesus' name, I pray for a truly abundant life, more than this world has to offer. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for listening to Simple Man Sermons, and have a blessed day.